The word logarithm is actually fairly well known and used even in everyday discussions, but it is used almost as a synonym for something mysterious, something very technical that very few people really understand. Well, hopefully after this class you will be one of the few people who understands them. What you see in front of you is the graph of the basic logarithmic function. And yes, there are many logarithmic functions, as the S at the end of the word in the title suggests. But don't worry, we're going to be focusing just on one of them pretty much. We're going to be using the basic logarithmic function uh, almost all of the times. But we will be looking at the other ones just to understand what they are. Now, why study logarithms? Well, of course, they're mathematical functions. They have lots of nice properties. For all, so for a mathematician, it is natural to say, oh, OK, let's study them. But they also have lots of applications, and probably you're already familiar with some of them. For instance, I don't know if you've ever been uh, involved in an earthquake. I have, and it's not a lot of fun. Actually, it's very scary. But the strength of an earthquake is measured in a scale, the Richter scale, which is actually a logarithm, logarithmic scale. It uses logarithms of certain things. Also, if you're trying to measure the level of acidity of certain substances, either you're spraying or you're playing with, uh, or of the environment around you, we use the famous pH scale, which is also a logarithmic scale. Now, why are these logarithmic scales used in these applications? Well, again, it's something that it's going to become clearer once we understand what logarithms are, and then once you're going to study some of these applications, which we're not going to do in this course. So let's see where these logarithms come from. We're going to start from exponential functions. Remember, these are the functions y equals a to the power x, where a is some positive number. And you may remember that these exponential functions are actually invertible. Well, this is not something that I said in the video, or maybe that we talked about in class, but it's something that can be seen quite uh, easily by just looking at the graphs of these exponential functions. Remember, for a greater than 1, this is what exponential functions look like. They're all increasing, therefore they all pass the horizontal line test, therefore they're all uh, invertible. But same thing happens when a is less than 1, because in that case, then the functions are all decreasing, and uh, therefore they still pass the horizontal line test. So if they are invertible, our task is to find the inverse. But how are we going to get that x out of the exponent? And where are we going to put the y correspondingly? There is no algebraic operation that allows us to do that. So in other words, we cannot solve for x to find the inverse. Remember, one way to find the inverse of a function is to solve for x and then switch x and y. We can't solve for x. There is no way to do that. So this is the situation where we need to simply say, all right, there is an inverse. We don't know how to find it or how to compute it as a formula. So we're going to give it just a different name. And so what we're going to do is we're going to need a new name for this inverse. And the name we're going to give it for now is just log. And the log is not a piece of wood. It's actually an abbreviation for, of course, logarithms. So if y is related to x through an exponential function, y equals a to the x, we're going to say that x is related to y through this logarithmic function log base a of y. Of course, now we still don't have an inverse function in order to complete the job. But what we have to do is switch x and y. And that leaves us with this, which is going to be actually the inverse of the original exponential function. Well, let's look at a little bit more of a formal definition of this thing. And now we'll go into some properties. So if we have this function y equals log base a of x, this is the inverse function of something. Of what? Once again, of the exponential function a to the x. So we're going to call this the logarithm of x in base a. And you will notice that, of course, for each exponential function, we're going to have a different corresponding logarithmic function. In all cases, a has to be a positive number. Now, beyond the mysteriousness of the word the logarithm, uh, by the way, it may be a good interesting exercise for you to Google the word logarithm and see if you can find out where it comes from. What language does it come from? What does it really mean? I'll leave that to you as a little uh, fun thing to do. But what is what does it really represent? Well, because of the way we have constructed it, it represents the exponent that we need for a in order to obtain x. So the logarithm of a number. Uh, in a certain base is the exponent to which we need to raise the base to get the number. For instance, let's say that I want to compute the logarithm base 3 of 9. What does that actually mean? Well, it means that I'm, I'm looking for 
the exponent to which to raise 3 in order to get the number 9. Well, in this case it's quite easy, we know what the answer is. The answer is 2, right? So, but then this is what we're going to be uh, computing with the logarithm. Of course, in, this, in a case like this one, it's a fairly easy computation. It's things like computing the logarithm base 3 of 8. That becomes a little bit more complicated. What exponent do we raise 3 to in order to get the number 8? Hmm, that's going to be more uh, interesting and complicated. Now, one important and very, very basic uh, piece of information that you need to keep in mind very, very clearly is the following. Let's say that we want to compute the logarithm in base a of a to the power x. Well, how much should that be? Well, let's see. What we're looking for is what exponent do we need to raise a to so as to get a to the x? Well, duh, it's got to be x, right? Another way to think about this is the fact that what we're doing on the left-hand side here, log base a of a to the x, is really we're computing f inverse of f of x. And we know that in generally, in general, when we're com composing a function with its inverse, we end up with just the original uh, value of x. And the same thing happens in reverse. Let's say I want to compute a raised to the exponent of log base a of x. What do we get? Well, we're raising a to the number to which we need to raise a in order to get x. Well, what do we get? Well, think about it again. Of course, we get x again, right? Uh, we're looking for what happens when we raise a to the number to which we need to raise a to get x. Well, we get x. And again, this is a special case of the more general fact that if we compose uh, a function in its inverse in this other order, we still end up with uh, the original number x. So in other words, log and exponentials can be cancelled. You can think of the, those two equations as saying, well, if I get log base a of a to the x, log base a and a can cancel. And similarly, if I have a raised to log base a, the a and the log a can cancel, and I'm just left with x in both cases. So, what do the graphs of these logarithmic functions look like? Well, remember we have a very easy way of uh, getting the graph of an inverse function because that's what logarithms are all about, so let's use that. So, we know that if a is greater than 1, a, an exponential function will have a graph that looks like this. So, how do we get the graph of the corresponding logarithm? Well, what we need to do is draw the diagonal line and then reflect the original graph around this diagonal line and that gives us this particular graph which is the same that I was showing you at the beginning. Now, what happens if a is less than 1? Well, in this case, the exponential will look like this and, well, it's not going to be as easy to get the reflection but we can still do it. It's not that difficult either. So, we draw the diagonal line, we flip it flip the uh, exponential graph around this diagonal line and we end up with this other graph. Now this graph, this second graph, is something we're not going to be using very much so you may want to know it uh, more as an exercise in getting the graph of an inverse function but the one that you really want to focus on is the one on the left. That's the one that we're going to be using most of the times because the basic logarithmic function we will be using is one whose base, a, is a number greater than 1. In fact, I think you will not be surprised if I tell you right now that the number is going to be the number e, the same one that we use as the base, the standard basis for exponential functions. Now, since we have constructed logarithms as inverses of exponentials, we should be able to transfer a whole bunch of properties from what we know about exponentials to what we can find out about logarithms. So let's do that. So exponential functions, remember they're the form y equals a to the power x and their graphs look like this, right, depending on whether a is positive, negative, great, small and so on. And correspondingly, the corresponding logarithmic functions are the form y equals log base a of x and again their graphs look like this, uh, just like the original exponentials just flipped around the diagonal. Now let's see, remember for exponential functions the domain consisted of all numbers, right? Well, how does that translate to the logarithmic function? Well, remember inverse functions switch domain and range. So that means that the range of a logarithmic function is all numbers. So you can get any number as the logarithm of something. On the other hand, we know that the range of exponential functions consists only of positive numbers and exponential is always positive. Well, that tells us that the domain of logarithmic functions is always greater than zero. So we can only compute logarithms of a positive number. 
and that comes from the fact that whenever we get an exponential we obtain always a positive number so it does not make any sense to ask for to what exponent we need to raise a positive number in order to get a negative one we'll never get one so the domain of logarithmic functions is always positive numbers now also all exponential functions go through the point zero one remember that's the common point to all of them well all we have to do is switch x and y and we find out that all logarithmic functions go to the point 1, 0. So they all contain that particular point. Also, we notice that all exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote. It's always the x-axis, either on the left or on the right. Well, once we flip things around, that means that all logarithmic functions have a vertical asymptote. It's going to be the y-axis and it's going to be either an asymptote up or down. We have some other properties coming from the algebra of these functions. So for instance, you may remember from the properties of exponents that a to the x plus y is going to be equal to a to the x times a to the y. Well, if you play a little bit with that, and I'm going to leave that, uh, that this little task of actually showing what I'm just about to tell you uh, on your own, but we're also going to look at it in class uh, just to make sure that everybody understands it. But try it on your own first. You can prove using the equation that you see on the left in front of you, you can actually prove that the logarithm base a of x times y is equal to the log base a of x plus the log base a of y. So now this is actually a very important formula because this is really the formula that prompted, prompted mathematicians to develop logarithms. If you notice, what this thing is doing, this equation is doing, is changing a product into a sum. What it is saying is that, well, let's say I need to compute x times y. By using logarithms, I can actually um, change the problem to finding a sum and of course uh, finding sums especially for large numbers is a lot easier than finding products so this is what originally motivated people to develop logarithms uh, for now we're going to be using only as uh, as uh, mainly just a, uh, a good nice uh, equation to use when we need it and we're going to need it lots of times now another thing that we know about uh, exponential uh, exponents in general is when we combine exponents a to the x all to the power of y that's the same thing as multiplying those exponents a to the x times y. Well again you can use this property of exponents to prove that the logarithm base a of x to the power of y is equal to y times the logarithm base a of x. Uh, again, I'm going to leave that to you to do this as an exercise and we're probably most likely going to see it in class and make sure we understand how to do it. And this now is a very pro important property for us. The previous logarithmic equation, logarithmic formula, was good historically or was important historically. This one is important for us because what this does, it allows us to use logarithms to get things out of the exponent. Notice on the left hand side we have x to the power y, we have a power, and we know that powers are more complicated and products just like products are more complicated than sums so by using logarithms we can take the power the exponent out of the power and change what was a power into a product and this is going to be very very useful in many situations also we saw that a to the log base a of x is equal to x again that's a cancellation property and we have seen that correspondingly log base a of a to the x is equal to x again I'm going to repeat this formula because they're very very important and they're one of the, uh, the, the key um, reasons for wanting to use these uh, inverse functions now also we remember we had a natural exponential function this was the basic exponential function the one we're going to use all the time correspondingly we're going to have a natural logarithmic function that's the one where the base is the same number e and because this is a logarithm which is used all the time we uh, mathematicians have developed a shorter notation for it so instead of writing log base e we're simply going to write ln for natural logarithm yeah I know the things look reversed but that's okay it comes from French logarithm naturel so uh, don't worry about that just use ln and we normally pronounce it ln it's just like the one that you have to mow every summer 
There is also another kind of very um, useful and popular kind of exponential function that we haven't seen and we're not really going to see very much is the common exponential. Um, it uses the regular base for our numbering system 10, so it's called the common exponential. And corresponding to it, we're going to use uh, we're going to have the common logarithm, so that's logarithm base 10 of x. And this also is a very important uh, logarithm in applications. In calculus, we don't really use it very much; it does not have any special properties, so we're not going to use it very much but uh, you may see it later on and also you will see it on your calculator because its symbol is simply log x you'll notice that your calculator only has ln and log so a logarithm base e and logarithm base 10 so what we need to do is we need to figure out a way of changing every other logarithm to one of these okay but your uh, your calculator certainly has both of these ones So let's see how we're going to change this base. So again, remember the point here is that we want to try and avoid using different bases. We want to stick to only one. We're going to choose the natural exponential uh, logarithm. So that means we're going to use e as the base. Uh, whatever we're, I'm going to say actually is going to work for uh, also, for instance, for the common logarithms or for any other logarithm. But again, we're going to be using the natural logarithm uh, all of the time. So I'm going to show you the, f the proof of this fact for or just that particular logarithm. So let's say that we have two numbers a and b both positive of course we're looking at bases of logarithms so they have to be positive. Okay, I'm gonna make a very bold claim namely that ln a times ln b is equal to ln b times ln a. Well that's not difficult to understand is it? I'm just switching the two and of course product being commutative it means I can do that. All right. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the properties of the logarithm. For instance, notice that I have this ln a which is multiplied by ln b. Remember one of the properties of logarithms was the fact that I could take exponents uh, out of a power and in front of the logarithm. Well, I can do the reverse. What I can do is I can take that ln a and put it in as the exponent of b inside the other logarithm. And of course I can do the same thing with the second number. So ln b, I can move it inside. And what do I end up with? Well, I end up with the first equation implying that ln of b to the power ln a is going to be equal to ln of a to the power ln b. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take exponentials on both sides. So e to the logarithm on the left hand side is going to be equal to e to the logarithm on the right hand side. Right? But remember what was the definition of logarithm? Well it's the inverse of the exponential. e and ln cancel each other. So that implies that b to the ln a is equal to a to the ln b. And by the way, this is a nice little equation, like nice little identity that works for any two numbers a and b and may have its own uh, applications at times, although we're not going to use it very often, but you know, it's something that it may be nice to know. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a root on both sides. Or if you want, I'm going to raise both sides to the exponent 1 over ln a. You may remember that taking a power which is a reciprocal is the same thing as taking a root, the ln a root. That's a weird root, isn't it? It's not a square or square root or a cube root. It's a root with some strange index. So think of it just as raising it to the exponent 1 over ln a. Well, on the left-hand side, the ln a and 1 over ln a, when I multiply them together using another property of exponents, they cancel each other out. And so they leave me with just b by itself. On the right hand side, on the other hand, I end up with a to the power ln b over ln a. All right, now this is a relationship that involves exponentials, right? The left hand side is a raised to something. So I can write that in logarithmic notation. And how does that work? Remember, what does that mean? It means that the logarithm in base a of b, so the number that I need to raise a to in order to get b, is equal to, well, is equal to the exponent you see in front of you, ln b over ln a. Well, that's exactly the formula I was looking for. This is the change of base formula. Notice that it tells us, doesn't matter what a and b are, the logarithm in base a of b is equal to what? Is equal to ln b natural logarithm of b, of the number whose logarithm I'm computing, divided by ln of the base, ln a. 
So it's a fairly simple formula. You may remember it also by remembering that in the form in the uh, expression on the left hand side you have log base a of b. A is written lower than a than b, and therefore in the change of base formula b goes higher up and a goes lower down. So logarithm base a of b is equal to ln b over ln a. And we can use this formula whenever we need to uh, go back from any logarithm we have to our good old natural logarithm.